Uh, good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday, January 23rd special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, would you please join me in a pledge of allegiance to the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please have the roll call from the clerk. Chairman Garvin? Here. Councilor Devereaux? Here. Councilor Gabrielson? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Randall? Here. And Councilor Straw? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, is there anybody here wishing to speak to something not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none. Our only agenda item tonight is a public hearing um, regarding item number 38-2019. Uh, this is in follow-up to um, our last town council meeting uh, where we referred this item to public hearing per uh, uh, what's laid out in the town charter and what's included here in the agenda tonight. Um, so at this point, I'll be opening up the uh, public hearing. Uh, there is no limit to the number of people that can speak. Uh, we'll hear everybody who wants to speak on this topic. You are asked, however, to limit your comments to three minutes uh, or approximately, and please just give us your name and address or affiliation um, when you come to the podium. So at this point, the public hearing is open. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Bryant, also known as Nick Bryant. I live at 55 Spurwick Avenue in Cape Elizabeth. And tonight I'm here as a representative of the Save Our Shoreline Access Coalition. Um, I'm the principal drafter working with SOS to uh, draft the citizen-initiated ordinance that you have in, in front of you under the uh, char Charter Article 8, Section 3. Um, I would note at the outset that uh, the town attorney, Mr. Hill, has proposed some revisions to the language in the ordinance itself. He's conferred with me about those. I'm in complete agreement that his changes actually clarify and simplify the ordinance without changing it substantively. And so I appreciate his input on that. Uh, the purpose of the ordinance is fairly straightforward. Um, it's to present, prevent the disposition of shoreline access without either a town council supermajority or a public referendum. The idea is, a uh, corollary of that, is to respect the citizenry of council-appointed committees, who are the people who identify shoreline access rights that they believe ought to be protected by the town. And another corollary is to respect the role of the council in acting as elected representatives of the town when it's appropriate to make a disposition. So the ordinance, in broad concept, imposes a higher standard on disposition of shoreline access rights by the town, again, forcing either a strong council consensus to garner a supermajority of votes, or if the council chooses, to be put out to a public referendum for determining the support of the public at the polls. Uh, what led SOS to uh, circulate and submit this petition? Um, there is a broad history of strong public, public support of protection of open space, of public rights, of shoreline access. You just have to look at Fort Williams, at the Greenbelt system we have, at the Shore Road Pass, at every comprehensive plan survey taken in the 30 years I've lived here, there's a very strong public support of protection of those public rights. In 2017, uh, the council unfortunately voted to vacate Surfside Avenue, one of the paper streets in the, uh, along the shore, against the Conservation Committee recommendation. Uh, fortunately, the the council recognized that was an error and reversed itself on that position. Unfortunately, litigation ultimately was initiated by some of the abutters on Surfside Avenue. And then this past summer, there was a proposed settlement reached in mediation in that litigation that considered the town again releasing its interest in the paper streets, or portions of the paper streets in that area in return for a significant uh, payment towards the town. Um, that also was a position that was rejected by the council following a public hearing and a great deal of testimony. Um, one of the things that struck me about that whole process is the realization that Fort Williams was saved by a single council vote some four or five decades ago from becoming a housing development. So the whole notion that a simple majority of the council could make a mistake that, that in retrospect would have such huge ramifications was one of the driving forces, I think, behind my support for this initiative referendum and for SOS's crafting of it in the first place. 
The key concepts that I uh, tried to formulate in drafting are first that I wanted the language to be broadly applicable rather than tied to narrow technical definitions. I wanted to respect the role of citizen committees in identifying those shoreline area access rights to be protected. I wanted to maintain the council's ability to allow disposition when it made sense and was appropriate. And I didn't want to hobble the rational functioning of our town government. A couple things I avoided in the drafting, again, all of this done in cooperation with, uh, with the principles of, of SOS, was we considered but rejected the notion of having some impractical standard of decision making by, by the council. Had we suggested a notion that the council would require unanimity to dispose of shoreline access real estate when we'd so broadly defined what the ordinance applied to, we thought would be a mistake because it would lead to a circumstance where, where even though nearly every, or everybody on the council agreed to the wisdom of a particular disposition, that the last council or to vote would essentially be able to hold that vote hostage for unrelated matters. And we wanted to make sure that we had a strong consensus on the council, but not necessarily unanimity. Mr. Bryant, can you wrap up your comments? Sure. Please, thank you. Um, the other thing I wish to avoid was the impractical requirement of a public referendum, which is time and expense. Um, I would ask that the council recognize the prudence and reasonableness of this proposed ordinance uh, and consider adopting it by yourself rather than sending it out to referendum because I think, uh, I think it's a wise and well-crafted now, with Mr. Hill's uh, efforts, a well-crafted ordinance that will serve the town well in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jim Mora, 5 Wombeck Road. The basics of this ordinance can be best illustrated by the fact that the town could sell Fort Williams to a developer with a 4-3 vote. Not that you would, but that a future town council could. I agree with the changes proposed by the town attorney. These are good updates that do not change the intent of the ordinance. My preference is for the town council to approve this ordinance. I do not support a special referendum on this ordinance. I believe a special referendum is not worth the cost with June and November voting alternatives already in place. I do not support a June referendum. Over the last three years, June referendums had about 30% voter turnout compared to November turnout. In 2016 and 2017, June voter turnouts were 1,014 and 1,125, about 25% more than the number of signatures on the ordinance petition. A June referendum vote does not provide much more public input than you already have in signatures. A November referendum is not my preference. The ordinance update states this provision shall apply to any proceeding involving the disposition by the town of an interest in real estate not fully consummated prior to January 2nd, 2019. A November referendum would put disposition of shoreline access over the next nine months on hold waiting for the November referendum vote. A town council approval of this ordinance is the best option to minimize cost, avoid a vote with minimal additional data, and minimize holes of 2019 shoreline dispositions. Thank you. Thank you. Colette Howe, High U Road, Cape Elizabeth, Maine, um, member of SOS. Um, a lot of this has already been repeated, so I'm going to try and streamline. Um, this, I'm here to address why we started a citizens' initiative. Um, Last August, it just didn't sit well that valuable shoreland in Cape Elizabeth um, could be given away by one vote. It just didn't sit well. So that's what stimulated this. Um, shoreland is a limited resource. It's a dwindling public, um, public access for not only commercial fishermen, but recreational fishermen for recreational people in Cape Elizabeth. As you know, Cape Elizabeth is becoming a destination for vacation people um, buying homes, and it's just it's something that the town has to look at and how we vote. It's changing, and it's the the simple majority vote may no longer be applicable. 
When we have a simple majority vote system disposing of limited shoreland access, it just, it's just too close to call for such a valuable asset. It's okay when you're looking at perhaps where do we relocate um, a utility pole or something like that. But when you're doing this for sh precious shoreland, shoreline access and land like that, it just it doesn't sit. You do not have great, greater consensus that you need. There's a gap there. So the thought is how do we balance that gap? How do we bring strong consensus? And is that one vote that makes that difference, is that really what the voters of Cape Elizabeth would want? So the thought is, how do we go about bringing that partnership? How do we move the needle to bring that together? Um, we need a stopgap. But yet, we want to respect your roles as town council members, right? We've elected you as our officials. We trust your decision making. We trust your expertise. So how do we bring those two together? And that's where this um, you know, greater majority vote, that's where this comes into play and where you have a super majority vote. And if you don't have that, that's where you get the town citizens to vote, where you have that one vote. And that's where the town citizens come into play and let them decide. In summary, going back to the Fort Williams debacle many years ago, that was in, I read the, the Historical Society book, that was a 14 year dilemma, 65 to 79. That was the one vote as you heard. I heard it was your father, I heard it was Sugarette's father, I'm not sure, <laughs> but anyway. Um, that could be a reverse if the state is a simple majority vote. It could go in reverse. All the shoreline could go away as public, it could be, versus public, it could be private. So, in summary, we need to look at Fort Williams as the shoreline that Save Our Shoreline Access Coalition and our town members stand on now as we utilize the Citizens Initiative Ordinance to move into the future, to propel changes to our, to propel changes to our process, which will impact how we protect our shoreline for tomorrow. So I ask you town council members who we duly respect and admire to please vote and enact the Citizens Initiative Ordinance to protect our shoreline access at your next town council meeting on February 14th. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for holding this public hearing tonight. I very much appreciate it. My name is Mary Ann Lynch, and I live on Old Colony Lane. Uh, I'm a former counselor, and so generally and philosophically, I don't really like ordinances that tie your hands, but, and it's a big but in this case, I did sign this petition, and the reason I did was because the council, and I recognize there are some new members, but the council has, I think, not responded to what has been the overwhelming display of public support for accepting the paper street, so I personally felt that there was no alternative left to the public to convey our concern about uh, losing these property rights. Uh, I still think you should vote to accept the paper street. I still believe that that would put the town in a stronger position in the lawsuit. I think it would also, as the lawsuit is resolved, resolve all of the issues. So. Um, I don't want to get lost in the issue of this referendum, the underlying issue of the Paper Street and Shore Acres. I think you really still need to take action on that. It's 2019, it has been pending for years. So I would urge you to adopt this referendum like an earlier speaker. I think it should be adopted by the council. If you don't, I would urge you to put it to a vote in June. Uh, the June referendum will have the school referendum. It may have the school bond issue for all I know, um, but generally with the school budget referendum, there's a large enough turnout. Uh, winter residents are back, 
And um, if you don't vote for it next month, which I would urge you to, I would encourage you to set it for the June uh, election. I would not want to see the town spend money to have a special election before June, which I think will have a very small turnout. So again, I thank you for your service and I thank you for your time and attention tonight. Thank you very much. I'm Sarah McCall and I live at 4 Avon Road and I'm actually here so that the new council members can see me um, so that when I get up here again you'll be terrified. Um, <laughs> I am also of course in favor of vacating the, the paper street and I'm in favor of changing the vote to require a supermajority. Um, and I really want to remind you of all the work that is behind you, in front of you, about our situation at Fort Williams. All those people are going to Fort Williams. And I just came from a meeting where one bus company is given the schedule for 860 buses. That's just one bus company. That piece of property in Cape Elizabeth is overpopulated, shall we say, and those of us who have opportunity to access a much um, lesser used commodity like a paper street in my neighborhood, surprise, surprise, we're looking forward to having that more than we ever expected because of the huge, huge surgence of um, people visiting Fort Williams. So the neighborhood access, whether it's this one or a future one, to any type of um, um, water, recreational walking, fishing, um, actually is increasing in importance um, just as everybody's been claiming for a while. So that and that rising sea, which you all know I'm certain is going to take away Trundy Point by the time I'm dead and in the ground. And so I want my children to have another place to walk in Shore Acres. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, my name's Priscilla Armstrong. I live at 18 Avon Road. And I, too, urge you to adopt this ordinance rather than send it out to referendum. Um, I think all too often we see it across the country as a whole, making decisions in response to an immediate perceived need, but then realize that a precious resource is been lost forever and, you know, Portland landmarks is beca exist because the train station got demolished. Um, we could probably come up with oodles of examples like this. And while I'm sure that this council and all other future councils will diligently consider any pros and cons before selling any shoreline <laughs> assets, this ordinance would, in my opinion, ensure a greater discussion and whatever decisions are ultimately made provide for more opportunity for greater buy-in from the community at large. So I urge you to adopt the ordinance in your next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Anita Pettit. I live at 8 Katahdin Road. I've been involved with the Citizens Initiative since its inception and have spent quite a bit of time talking with Cape citizens at the transfer station, the IGA, and the polling station in November. I look at my experience as a random sample of voter views on the subject. Many people read the proposed ordinance carefully and most asked a number of questions about the issue and the ordinance. At least 90% of the people I talked with signed the petition to advance this initiative. I consider the proposed an ordinance eminently reasonable, and it appears that a large majority of Cape voters agree. I ask the town council to vote to enact the citizens' initiative ordinance at the next town council meeting on February 11th. Thank you. Thank you. There are others that wish to speak. I'm Jody Bro. I live at uh, Five Wombeck Road, and I am the proud president of the SOS Coalition. Uh, I want to thank uh, Nick Bryant for all his help uh, with writing and all the work. Uh, when the SOS Coalition gets an idea, 
uh, we all talk at once, and we all get these ideas. It's all going 100 miles an hour. And we have someone like Nick who can just sort of calm us all down and then get it on paper and uh, submit it to, a, to you um, in a way that makes me very proud um, of all the people that worked on it and also um, of Nick Bryant. This doesn't get any easier coming up here. I just want to say that. Uh, I want to remind everyone that the Citizen Initiative Ordinance Petition is actually the second peti petition that the SOS has submitted to the Council. Cape citizens are telling you to protect and preserve public shoreline properties in all its forms. 1,400 Cape citizens signed the first petition asking you to accept Surfside Avenue, Atlantic Place, and Lighthouse Point Road. This month, January 2nd, the SOS Coalition has once again submitted a petition with the required number of signatures. We actually submitted 911, but we were out there in the pouring rain and the cold, and some of them aren't easy to read, and some people weren't sure that they signed, and da 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 da. But 911 people actually really wanted um, signed the petition, whether re legal or not. And uh, sorry, a petition with the required number of signatures to change the council's ability of disposing public shoreline properties. Please do not kick this issue further down the road. Enact this ordinance at the town council meeting directly following the public today's public hearing on February 11th. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other people that wish to speak about this? Please come forward. Good evening, Town Council. My name is Mike Thorne. I'm also affiliated with SOS. Um, at this point, SOS is a modest, low-key group of townspeople. Most of us are neighbors. Um, what we found in um, our modest efforts is that there's a huge amount of interest in land issues in the town, and there are people chomping at the bit to make this a bigger, more intense issue. Because we love our town and because we have faith in you, we have tried to keep this a low-key issue, um, relying on you to do the right thing uh, for the town you also love. but. There are lots of people in lots of environmental organizations in Maine and in southern Maine who would love to join in and jump on the bandwagon and make this a huge issue in all the resultant publicity and all the career ambitions of other people and politicians. So this could be this could become big and noisy. And we all know from past issues that whenever anything happens in Cape Elizabeth, there seems to be an inordinate amount of interest in what happens in our little town for a variety of reasons. So, for the, for the sake of peace and harmony in our town, I urge you to consider carefully the protection of land, because if you don't, all hell is gonna break loose. And I say that not, I say that because I want to prevent that from happening, but the wind has shifted and I just hope that our little town can remain peaceful and a wonderful place to live really. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bob Cronin, it's 7 Avon Road. Uh, I'm affiliated with SOS also. I was just thinking that a political scientist once observed that politicians look ahead to the next generation, the next uh, election, and <laughs> statesmen look ahead to the next generation. And when, you, when is a supermajority required? When the irreversible consequences when, of an action uh, have a major import, if, it only takes one council to make one vote to surrender its rights over 
the paper streets, and that would be forever. And the next generations of Cape Elizabeth citizens would be so much the less uh, uh, recreational space if, you, if it's given up. I see nothing wrong with letting the people decide if you decide not to, but a supermajority is required uh, to, say, amend the Constitution, three quarters of the state legislatures, two thirds of the Senate, two thirds of the House. So when something has a major import, a supermajority makes a great deal of sense. Thank you. Thank you. Other speakers? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Um, <clears throat> I should have uh, mentioned it was in the agenda, but I'll reiterate now that the council is not going to be taking any action on this here this evening. Um, I think most folks in the room are aware of that, but just for everybody else's benefit. Um, <clears throat> so this public hearing was held in accordance with the town charter uh, for when uh, uh, public petitions are brought forth like this. Um, we will be setting on the February 11th, 2019 regular council meeting agenda, an item uh, at which point we will vote on this. Like all council meetings, there will be opportunity for public comment on that item at that meeting as well. Um, that will be limited by the normal 15-minute uh, period unless otherwise uh, ruled on by the council. Um, so I want to thank you all for coming out here tonight and for sharing your opinions and perspectives with us on this item. I know it's of great importance to the people that are here, and I know the council values everybody's opinion on the matter. Um, so without any uh, other discussion on this, I'll ask if there are any citizens at this point that wish to speak on anything that was not on tonight's agenda. And seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much.